In this question, we are given the magnitude of a force. We also have a displacement vector. And then in part A, they are giving us an amount of work done on this object. And the question asks us for an angle. So we need a relationship, therefore, between force, displacement, work, and then an angle. And if we look at the equation for work, one of the equations that would come in handy is this one right here. We can see that work is equal to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and displacement vector. Now we're looking for that angle and we can see from the equation that in order for us to proceed, we need to find the magnitude of the displacement. So we need to find D. The question does not give us the magnitude of the displacement, it gives us the actual displacement vector. This is a three-dimensional vector, it's got an x component of positive 2, a y component of negative 4, and a z component of positive 4. We need to figure out the magnitude, basically how long is that vector. And we might have learned in an earlier chapter that to find the magnitude of a displacement vector, we have to take the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared and then plus the z component squared. It's basically a three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the x, y, z components. So again, the x component is two, we'll square that, and then the y component is negative four squared, the z component is positive four squared. So let's process what's underneath the radical. And when we do so, we get 36, we take the square root and we get a displacement magnitude of six meters. So that's great. We also have the force, whose magnitude was 13 newtons, and then the work for part A was positive 15.6 joules. Now we take a look at that work equation, and again, work equals magnitude of force times magnitude of displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. We could solve this for the angle. We could divide both sides by the term FD, so we cancel it out on the right-hand side. And then to isolate the angle, recall that what you'd have to do is take the inverse cosine on both sides of the equation. Effectively, what that does is cancel the cosine out. So we can basically erase the cosine at that point. And now we have the expression for our angle. And we can simply plug in the values that we listed above. Now, punch that into your calculator, making sure that it is set to degree mode and you should get 78.5 degrees for the angle. That is the correct answer to part A. We scroll back up to see what part B is requesting, and in part B, the only thing that they have changed is the amount of work done. You can see that it's now negative 15.6 joules rather than positive 15.6 joules. Otherwise, the question is the same. So essentially, we can copy and paste what we did in part A, and then just change the positive 15.6 into a negative 15.6. So we'll pick up our calculator one more time and punch in the data, and this time our angle turns out to be about 101.5 degrees. So this is the correct answer for part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.